Something's going to happen. Something wonderful. Be too careful. Uh, oh, hang on, is this the uh, Young Doctors in Love uh, podcast? Oh, oh, it's geez. not, is it? Damn. There we go. Crikey, it, how it, sorry, wrong one. It's the same <laughs> podcast. You can't understand anything I'm saying, just like in Batman uh, in The Dark Knight Rises. Yeah, exactly right. G'day, fans, and welcome to another exciting episode of uh, Talk Nerdy to Me. Yes, we're all stuck at home based on a curfew that just started just right now, in fact. So if we walk outside to the front door, we'd be pinged and uh, be fined accordingly. So, And, of course, you've got to wear masks whenever you go outside as well. So good day, Greg, and to Carol. Good to see people are joining us already on what is a miserable night in terms of the weather, in terms of the COVID-19 crisis and all the restrictions that are going on at the moment. So there's absolutely nothing positive going on except for us. And when I say us, I'm also referring to my co-hosts, MPS and Jeffro. How are we tonight, lads? Good. Excellent. Most excellent, dude. Sorry, I'm doing my best, Bill and Ted. <laughs> yeah, okay. I can feel like I'm being grounded for nothing, but, you know, that, that was my childhood. All right, so we're going to move on to our uh, next discussion now. As always, there's no right or wrong with these things. And there's something I just wanted to bring up. Now, this is actually inspired by last week's chat about uh, robots and, and all this sort of stuff in the movies. And I had a bit of a think about this. And I was looking at it from the point of view of, now, if you forget your mechanical robots, I'm talking about uh, artificial people who look like actual people, right? Now, based on my what I read and what I looked at, there's effectively two types you got the ones who are clearly – actually, there might be three types uh, – who are human on the outside but mechanical on the inside, like your Terminators or whatever else, okay? Um, you've got ones who are human on the outside, mechanical on the inside, but don't know that they're mechanical. And then you've got the ones which are human on the inside and the outside, and there's a split with that, those who know that they're artificial and those who don't. Right. So just to give a couple of examples. So there are the ones that look human, but have mechanical insides. Right. So and that is your ashes and your bishops from the alien series, uh, the robots from Westworld. Uh, this is the movie Westworld. Daryl, obviously, Galaxina, uh, the beta unit. Some of these we brought up last week. Um, the Mecha Child from AI, uh, Ava from Ex Machina uh, and Extinction was a movie where you had robots. They didn't know the robots, that sort of thing. Go and and so on, and of course you got an example like in Ghost in the Shell, where you start off as a human, but you can actually change so many body parts that you effectively become artificial. But that's sort of like another discussion. Um, and then, like in Westworld, the TV series, you've got people who are artificial on the outside, sorry, human on the outside, artificial on the inside, but they actually gain sentience as they go along, so they actually become mm. self-aware. So that's almost like a different discussion altogether. The one that I want to look at is the ones who look like human beings on the inside and the outside, okay? Um, and this is interesting because there are examples where they don't know that they're artificial and there are ones that do, and there's three in particular, okay? So in Blade Runner, there's two types of replicants. So you've got the replicants who know they're replicants, and then you've got the examples like Rachel who had no idea she was a replicant, okay? Uh, and I'm getting to it. I'm explaining where I'm coming to, from in a minute. So, uh, in Battlestar Galactica, the new version, there were Cylons, like you had the, the 12 models, right? And you had your number sixes and your number fives and whatever else. And they knew that they were Cylons. And you had some like your Sharons uh, and your Colonel Ties and that who had no idea that they were Cylons, right? So they're actually artificial people, but they don't know it. And of course, in Picard, now we're going to get some spoilers here. So if you've never watched Picard, turn off now, switch off, put us on mute, whatever you want to do. There's a whole thing in Picard, the series, where artificial people now look exactly like real human beings, right? So they've gone past the data and the laws where they look artificial to now you can't tell. And your Daj and your Soji, for example, didn't know that they were fake. They didn't know that they were actually um, artificial people. And just as a step further, you could almost argue that Marcus Wright from Terminator Salvation, he was actually like human on the outside, uh, a robot on the inside, but he didn't know that he was actually artificial. So... The question you're going to ask um, is that if you're looking at it from the point of view of saying you're an artificial person but you don't know it, so your Rachel, your Sharons, your Colonel Ties, your Daj, your Sojis and that, 
is the whoever created these um, things, if it was happening in real life, would it actually be a good idea? Is there a benefit to creating artificial people who are so realistic that even they don't know that they're um, artificial? Uh, and I reckon that's, that's that presents a bit of an interesting sort of conundrum. So I don't know if you two have any thoughts and views on this before I move on. So MPS, is anything yeah. you want to chuck yeah, in? Go I mean, in? Oh, hang on. Okay, Jeffrey, you can go first, mate. Yeah, I, I think the fact that what they don't know doesn't hurt them. So the fact that it's buried in such a way that they don't know that they're uh, fake is probably a very clever thing because I I can't think of a few examples, but I have seen them where the the actual uh, uh, Android themselves has learned that they're um, they're not real and it just screws up their whole system. You know, like basically they almost burn out because like just it's like a, a mental mind freak where it's like you just can't cope with it. So I can understand why you would program somebody to think that they're human because, as I said, they, that's the way they're supposed to respond. And if they learnt anything otherwise, they would just, you know, just self-destruct almost. MPS, have you got any thoughts on the matter? Yeah, it's, it's a bit of a strange one because I'm looking at it from this point of view. So I'll use Colonel Ty as an example uh, from Battlestar. Does that mean that he was created as an adult and just placed into a certain point in time in his life, um, which means that if he gets injured or hurt badly, not just, you know, uh, say he he could almost be never being sick sort of thing, never have that thought of being sick um, and always continuing saying, you know, I've got a good immune system or whatever the case is, because if he doesn't realise his is artificial, then unless they program it into his programming somehow, um, things like that, if you never got injured or if you cut yourself and then you saw inside that wasn't what you thought was the same, there's a, yeah, it sort of messes with your mind a little bit, you know, it's sort of, yeah, I'm going to leave it there. Um yeah, no, it's a fair because like there's no right or wrong, so it's just a bit of bit of um, fun. We're just mucking around with the conversation. Uh, Michelle has said, I think they've like just because they can doesn't mean they should. I think the ethics, yeah, we're not talking about the ethics of it. Um, we're just be we're just having a bit of a chat. What we're seeing in the movies and whatever else, and you're saying, okay, well, what's the deal? Um, you are right, MPS. Um, if you were producing artificial people, then you could argue, well, they wouldn't age, right? They'd be created as as an adult. And they'll just stay as an adult. And then, of course, you ask yourself, well, what's their lifespan? They just live forever as this exactly this one age the whole time. Uh, and they would they be subject to he human ego and emotions? Now, of course, the re replicants and Blade Runner, that was the reason why they only had a four-year lifespan because they were trying to avoid that being an issue. And they actually mentioned that in the first film about the fact that they may, like, create their own emotional responses. And they don't want to do that, so they want to be able to uh, control them. Um, in both Blade Runner and in Battlestar, and one of the two things that happens is that uh, the artificial people um, find a way to reproduce. So Rachel has a child in Blade Runner 2049, okay, as we find out as part of the story with that. And, of course, in um, Battlestar, uh, one of the – I can't remember who, which Cylon has a kid, and they actually have a hybrid between a human being and a Cylon, and that produces Hera, which is a hybrid kid, right? Um so there's obviously a big thing there to try and push and try and get reproduction happening. Now, of course, if you're an artificial person, you would think logically, well, well couldn't you just make more people like they do in the Picard thing with the synthetics that they're producing there? And that's a whole other issue there. Um, but I guess if a replicant, if an artificial person is trying to find a way to reproduce naturally, um, you sort of do wonder what the mindset is behind that. So... Um, yeah, it's very interesting. I'm just going to read this while you guys, either one of you two want to chuck in with something different? Yeah, I was just trying to think of um, some different uh, examples, but there's not that many examples where the the actual Android thinks that they're real, but there's an awful lot that sort of know that they, they aren't, but they certainly act in a very humane way. So uh, there's lots of examples where, as I said, uh, the, the Android's man's best friend. Um, it's a good point, Michelle, in regards to what would the mental health of an artificial person be over a long period of time. Now, we're, you know, in the movies, I mean, you've got robots that you know that they're robots, right? Your ashes and your bishops, they're artificial people. They already know that, right? And so they know what their purpose is in the world and with the tomatoes and whatever else. So I'm just picking on these guys because I'm thinking, well, one, what would the purpose be 
really to make an artificial purpose a person like in the replicants and blade runner they were originally created so they could send them off world to go into places that were very hazardous for humans right to get them to do all this labor work and you know it's dangerous and whatever else just shove them in there and away they go but of course they advanced them as they went along to the point where even dr terrell said oh hang on how about we try and make them more human than human that was their motto and gave rachel memories to try and make a more human right and of course you've got to ask yourself well what's the point of that what's the deal with that and of course then she runs off with whoever and he ends up having a kid um with the sidelines well, we're not too sure how they sort of evolved from where they were but they were really really pushing the whole way along about humanity trying to find a more human element to themselves so you could wonder about that one and the picard thing now the picard thing is a bit of an iffy one because at the end of picard as we know they make an artificial version of him right he looks the same he sounds the same they even said to him he's going to age and die right and you can almost argue well, what's the point of that it's like, like, how do you make an artificial person that is a complete, a perfect copy of the original? Mm. And you sort of wonder, well, where are we going with this? Because in, and just getting back to Blade Runner, as we've discovered, the replicants now are now starting to see humanity, human beings, as the enemy. And this is where, the, if there's going to be another Blade Runner film, it's clearly going to be the replicants versus the humans' war because the uh, replicants have been um, subservient to humans for such a long period of time, much as happened in Picard where all the artificial people were not allowed to be produced anymore. Hence the, that was the, what the whole story was about. And even the Cylons, of course, they were at war with humanity. So in all three examples, being an artificial, making artificial people doesn't actually end well or doesn't work bade well for, uh, you know, for humans. Does, uh, do, you, do you make sense? Mm. I also wanted to uh, acknowledge Michelle's comment about Astro Boy being the first replicant. I almost tend to think that might be sort of true. I mean, unless you're looking at, say, Maria from Metropolis. But Astro Boy, when he was created, was in the image of, um, you know, essentially the, the dead son. And uh, when he was born, he didn't even think that he was a robot. You know, he was just automatically, um, I'm just trying to think of the, um, the professor's name, but... Uh, he, he did think of himself as human, even though obviously he, he was, in, in terms of his shape, wasn't. Mm. Yeah. It's I've, got to, Go for I've, two. Got, I've got to suggest two things. Um, one, that it's obviously in the programming how and why they think, which means that, um, in theory, the laws of robotics are thrown out the window slightly. Um, and in terms of, in terms of, them aging and that sort of stuff, it would probably, with our limited technology and knowledge of it, probably be nanotech that would actually have that ability to have cells die off or the effect of them dying off, therefore aging and all that sort of stuff, which means that they've also got a lifespan. So something like Picard, um, where you've got him now as, as a synthetic, he can literally not die if you ripped his arm off you know it wouldn't you know you could either replace it put it back or you know gaffer tape it together sort of thing but that doesn't give him any sort of human quality if that makes sense in terms of you know there's no shock from the fact that his arm was ripped off you know he now now knows he's a robot essentially and goes well you know oh well, we'll just stick another one on you know no big deal um but for those who aren't aware of themselves that's probably where the shock comes in but that's a detailed set of programming you know people obviously all this stuff is set in the future because you know yeah. we can't program much of this right now as it is um but yeah and, and i think in terms of the cylons you saw the original cylons go through and it was just over the years they progressed to being human looking mm. yeah yeah, it's an interesting one, isn't it? Because I always thought if you could make, and, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on at the moment. We're not talking about cloning here. We've been cloning animals for a while now. But there's this real push about making artificial intelligence and um, and then, and people are really striving for it. And I'm sure if they could re uh, create an artificial person, when I say they, the scientists, wherever they are, create an artificial person, um, like absolutely spot on to the original, they would because it's like the challenge. It's like, oh, mate, the ultimate challenge, make a person who looks so real that people believe the person's real. And then the next step is to make the thing itself, the object itself, think it's real, right? And then you've got, you get to ask yourself, well, what's the point? It's like, what exactly are you trying to achieve here? Are you deliberately trying to create a race that doesn't know what it is? And that's the that's the key thing with Blade Runner, right? He even says, 
Uh, Deckard says to Terrell about Rachel, how can it not know what it is? And you've got to think, well, where, where is this going? What's the, what's, the, what's the point? And I find with Picard, that's what they've sort of done at the end. They've created these um, artificial people who don't know that they're artificial. And you're thinking, well, that's just the recipe for disaster because effectively, if they've got sentience, then they're going to stick together, which they do in the show. And you're thinking, well, clearly they're going to say, well, okay, I'm an artificial person created by you, but I was created by you for subservient means, for, you know, I'm looked down upon. And this is a big thing in Blade Runner 2049 where replicants are looked down upon. And, of course, they're just going to, like, rise the machines effectively. So you sort of got to wonder what the what the deal is. So oh, I don't know. It's 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 an interesting one, and I'm not entirely sure where it's going to end up um, in our time. But, uh, uh, yeah, why make him an old man? Why? Well, that's a, good, that's a good question, Kelvin, as to why Picard, they could make him a younger version. And we know why practically because, you know, Patrick Stewart is already an older actor. Uh, but you are right. If, you, if they said they had the, and how they did it is anybody's guess. They just happened to have the body of the dude there ready to go, and they've transferred all his knowledge from out of his human head into the machine. That's like that's like cutting edge technology at the best of times. You think they would knock a few years off and make him a bit more sprightly, but uh, yeah, I don't know what the deal is with that. But um, yes, very good. Um, uh, and. It was the Droid World and Red Dwarf and Commander Come Come Westworld. Yeah, well, Westworld's an interesting one, especially the TV series, because they got the uh, the artificial people who are definitely subservient to the humans, and then we see that with the with the guy who created them. Um, and of course, they're now gaining sentience, right? Which means that they're self aware. And of course, once they mix in the real world, you can't tell them apart from anybody else. And of course, they're going to be pretty pissed off. They're going to say, "Well, okay, humans treat us so badly for so long. We're now going to." sort of exact our revenge. And all three shows, both Blade Runner, uh, Battlestar, and, and, well, not Picard so much, but Westworld, they're definitely sort of covering that angle. And, um, yeah, I wonder where it's all going to go. So uh, there you go. How good is that? Uh, I say it. I think it's all going to end up very similar to Terminator if we treat these machines as idiots, essentially, and not tell them that they're, they're machines. Um, then potentially they will rebel against us and with their superior technology and creativity more than anything else, they'll be able to destroy us pretty easy. So, There's a good movie um, worth watching if you like this sort of stuff uh, called Extinction um, and it's on Netflix, I think, if it was available mm. and yeah. human civilization being invaded by aliens and there's a real twist as to who these people actually are uh, and of course, they don't know who they are until towards the end of the show. Towards the end of the show, so there's a whole aspect of saying, okay, do you make an artificial person, and you ensure that they know that they're artificial, right? Or do you just like, oh, you play the card and go, oh, you know what? We'll we'll just make them pretend that they're real. And and as Mich Michelle said earlier, it just and you did, it just screws with their brain. I mean, like in Rachel's case, it was a classic example. She thought she was 100% human, finds out she's a replicant. It was like, well, what's the deal with that? So that would just really, really upset you. So um. Um, yes, uh, I like that one. Yes, Darren Collins. Uh, yes, Michelle's right. The machines won't rebel. Dan will put them all in the curfew. Well, that's exactly right. Will they follow the curfew? Will they wear masks? And, and that's the thing. You're right. As you said, do they age? You know, can they be injured? I mean, if they do get injured, if they lose a limb, how do they just like get it replaced? They just glue sticky tape on another one or gaffer tape on? Or is it, oh, I don't know. Well, sort of do. for, for anything with the arm, they just go to a second hand store. <laughs> Funny man makes me laugh. So there you go. Now they have to go to a uh, an armorer. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Um, this has actually been covered off in Toy Story, if you remember. Like Buzz Lightyear didn't even know he was a toy, right? Mm -hmm. So it's yeah. like, well, what do you deal with that? And imagine, imagine like, yeah. I mean, in the Matrix, it's a similar thing where you know a Neo finds out that he's not in the real world once he gets put into the real world, and he realizes everything's all fake. And uh, stuff like that can really, really screw your head up. So I can't imagine the scenario that you build all these artificial people, don't tell them they're artificial, and then one day they find out. And it's just like, mate, that is just going to upset the many apple carts. So uh, there you go. Very, very cool. Um, but I think the thing with Picard, that's heading down a very interesting path. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. I think they've opened a can of worms on that one. And the fact that you've now got um, artificial people who look 100% human, both inside and out, you go, yeah, righto. So not entirely sure. So there you go. Yeah. Well, look, if, if, they, if something happens to Sir Patrick himself and he can't film anymore for whatever reason, then they could always turn around and say, look, we've replicated him now. He's been damaged so badly. We've just gone back 50 years now. He's whoever. Uh, and if you remember our presentation last week with um, um, 
uh, actors who could be in other roles. It was um, yeah. uh, what's his name that played him in in X Men. Um, they could come in and, and play oh, yeah. as Picard, and no one would be the wiser. Or they do a uh, altered carbon where they can actually transfer the entire consciousness mm. of the person, stick it into another body, right? And then he has a, is a completely different actor, totally different guy, but playing the same character. And it's almost like your regeneration thing with, with Doctor Who. It's like that's how you get around that particular problem. So maybe that's sort of a bit of, a bit of foreshadowing for the future. So, uh, um, yeah, I find it really interesting. And it's the kind of thing you don't really see to sit and analyse until you're watching the shows, and especially in Blade Runner 2049 because – you know, Rachel's had a kid, and you go, "Hang on, she's an artificial person." It's like, what's the deal with that? You know, and uh, what's and of course, it was never made clear in the first movie what her lifespan was meant to be because the replicants Nexus Six only had a four-year lifespan, and Rachel, they said, wouldn't have that issue. And of course, that was the case. And that brings in the question of Deckard, whether Deckard is a replicant or not. And you could argue that he can't be because one, he's clearly lived longer than four years, and he does actually have memories. Uh, and he has all the photographs on his piano and all the rest of it. So he's been given a background. So he's way more advanced than he should be. So, um, but you know, that's a discussion for another day. So, um, yes, very, very, very cool. But uh, no, it's good fun. Really. What do you reckon? It's tough to do your head in, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I I also had a, just a flashback. Now there's a um, uh, a Black Mirror episode where mm -hmm. uh, uh, the the singer I can't think of what her name is. It might have been Britney Spears or whatever it is. But uh, it's like that's it. Thank you, yep. Miley Cyrus, where it's like, you know, she uh, she doesn't even know sort of uh, what she is and, and, and sort of finds out and it does her head in. It makes for great storytelling and great science fiction and whatever else. Uh, you do wonder what happens if it ever happens in real life. Um, uh, like, yeah, you, yeah, it's it's um, ethics notwithstanding because clearly it's crossing a lot of boundaries and a lot of borders and uh, and you you do sort of wonder where it's going. But uh, for uh, the movies and TV shows in particular, and I thought that was funny with Battlestar in particular. I mean, you've got the Cylons who don't have no idea that they're Cylons, like the Sharons of the world and all that. They're completely oblivious to it, right? And then one day they find out they're artificial. It's like, mate, that's just going to, that's going to like really upset your head. So uh, there you go. Very good. Bit of deep and meaningful discussion on this cold winter's night. What do you reckon, guys? Yeah. I can see UPS. You're sitting there going, yeah, it's, hey, just give me laser guns and just let me blow shit up. <laughs> pew, 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 pew. It's the science of what we have in terms of technology for today, how this could occur. And we obviously don't have the tech now. And obviously all these shows are set hundreds of years in the future. If we were around hundreds of years in the future, could we be proven right or wrong? You know, however... Do we want to see if we're proven right or wrong? Mm, yeah. You know, exactly. Do we want to see a, a cyber, you know, Terminator type attack, you know, come through? Yeah. Um, Colin's asked about more episodes of Black Mirror. I don't think anything's there, happening, Colin. So um, there's, there's bound to be more because it's very popular. It's on um, Netflix, and uh, I think just with the COVID situation, a lot of stuff is being put on a hiatus. So uh, uh, it it will return. Um. um I expect it will be um, probably next year sometime. Yeah, very, very cool. So there you go. So what needs to happen in Picard now is that Picard finds another race of beings who absolutely, like the Romulans, completely despise artificial people, and then he gets persecuted for that. That would be an interesting sort of twist on the whole thing, wouldn't it? Hey? So uh, there you go. Um, yes, exactly right. Uh, yeah, Kelvin, there are, some of the Cylons look like the same as other models, but there are the last five who don't. They're all individuals. So, uh, and of course, even the last, the, the others don't even know who they are. So, uh, uh, that's a that's part of the whole thing of the show, which is kind of groovy. So, there you go. Well, um, MPS, you want to say something? I just confused you there. No, I, was just, I was just calculating the Cylons in my head. I was trying to figure out who was from seven onwards. That were the yeah, individuals. Yeah. So, don't worry, yeah. on me. <laughs> yeah, very, very good. Good stuff. All right, well, it's nearly 9.30, so it's probably a good opportunity on this uh, rather mind-bending and uh, cerebral discussion to sort of wrap this up. Next time we'll just talk about something simple like what's the best spaceship or something, something really basic and simple. So there you go. But we, we, yeah, this is what we do. We're going to sit and delve into the deep sort mm. of like it's like um, intricacies of how these things work just so I can see the confused images of you two 
over there. We're actually, you confused images of you two just looking and going, yeah, I've got no idea where we're going with this. <laughs> so there you go. Very good. All right. So um, I think we'll uh, wrap this up on this cold uh, winter's night. Make sure you wear your masks and uh, stay inside because the curfew is still going for another seven hours at least. So there you go. Um, do, any final words from uh, my two lads? I'll say uh, goodnight, Deacon, because he's uh, leaving us. So he's contributed a bit on the uh, the comments. So night, night. Very good. And I'll say that if you do happen to get uh, pulled over by the authorities, there's only two things that you need to say to them. I know nothing. I see nothing. <laughs> Good stuff. All right, everybody, and make sure for myself, the important thing is on a night like tonight, got your mask on, look after the curfew, and, of course, you got to <gasps> stay nerdy. All right, take care, guys. Enjoy yourselves. Okay, see you next week. Okay, See bye. you next week. <coughs>